Hey guys, today we're going to have a candid conversation about counterfeits, where they are, what you should look, not necessarily about the quality of counterfeits, but how far along they have come. In my opinion, quality is still subpar. If you ever played Magic before, you would know that the cards feel a little different. They actually smell. Um, smell is one of, strangely one of the best indicators that the card that you might be holding is fake. But today I'm going to talk about the type of people who sell fake Magic cards and the extent that they do. So they're professionals. They're very good at scamming and they haven't scammed just in Magic, but as you'll see from this article, this is a Californian con artist and he is heading to prison. He owes the government $2.4 million, which he tricked investors or real estate. So he worked in real estate and as you're going to read later, he actually worked for Donald Trump. But I don't know if this fraud case was the same. So please don't sue me, Donald Trump. Anyway, uh, it's fascinating the type of people who are now big players in fake counterfeit magic cards. They have invested quite a bit of money. It's not, I know people say that China is a, the source. I'm getting, I'm hearing that Canada um, has made better counterfeits at a cheaper cost and the quality is just better overall um, because China has no, they don't play magic. They don't know what magic, they might know a lot more now, but they're not originally magic players. So we're going to talk about who and the reason I am so afraid of what's coming next is because you have people who are known criminals who have gone to jail and they've decided to do magic cards. So one of the red flags, the first red flag that comes up is if magic cards are worth $10,000 and someone's trying to sell it to you for $3,500, that should be a red flag. Ding, ding, ding. Hey, you know, who's going to sell these expensive magic cards for 35% when they could take it to a store and buy listed for 50%. So the magic cards we're talking about are Lotuses and Moxes. So he used to work for Trump. Um, he would buy homes facing foreclosure and then resell them at 20% profit and make money to split among the investors. That's at least what his story was. However, he... This is not the only case where a professional scammer, if you will, has taken advantage of Magic players. And it's profitable. As long as Magic cards are $10,000, or as long as they can get $3,500 for Magic cards, these type of people will be interested in scamming people. I mean, it's just a nature. They don't know anything about Magic cards. They don't. This guy probably has never played a game. But he was like, oh, this is cash. So it's actually not 2.4. I don't, 2.8 million dollars must be paid, repaid to victims, you know, by him and his accomplices uh, by judge order. And he's in jail now. And that's the type of people who are dealing with counterfeit magic cards. They don't really have much to lose. The guy was going to end up in jail anyway. And if the deal is too good, if the deal is too good to believe, step back. Have someone who's neutral or biased or have your local game store look at it and say, hmm, or do the trade at a local game store. Ask the players, bring a loop, whatever. If cards are worth $10,000 and someone's like, hey, I need, I'll need, i sell it to you for $3,500 and you know that buy list is for a high, much higher than that, please, please, please double check those cards because what my greatest, what I believe could happen, I'm not saying 100% will happen, is Magic is now attracting non-Magic players. That's not necessarily a good thing uh, from an investment standpoint or a player standpoint. It, I think it will harm the game because people look at Magic as a profitability center and hey, I'm only taking advantage of a nerd, right? Anyway, be careful, guys. Bye.